Now, I want to see what my panel have to say about this. We have Peter Whittle, New Culture Forum, and also Benjamin Butterworth. Peter, it sounds to me rather concerning. On the one hand, good news, the government seems to be processing claims they've got more caseworkers on the case. But if this means that they're essentially just, you know... Uh, rubber stamping. Yeah, the rubber stamping, speeding them through without necessary care. If they're saying, OK, if you come from Afghanistan, Eritrea, Libya, Syria, Yemen, all of these war-torn countries, that it's likely you'll have a legitimate claim, so we'll just sort of grant you asylum. Well, what about safety concerns of the British people? Of course, but they always come last. I mean, the fact is, is that uh, when it comes to asylum claims, we, we are using that officially. I think these people, the vast majority of young men in their 20s and 30s, economic migrants, right? They should be treated as, as illegal from the moment they, you know, step inside this country. But anyway, the fact is, is when it comes to these interviews, right, uh, if you came from France, which, or Belgium, or wherever you came from, uh, you know, the fact is, is you should uh, immediately have your asylum claim denied. It's simple as that. If you came from a safe country, which most of them have done, you have it denied. Well, there's a very slim but chance of similarly, that happening. Second, yeah, exactly, but why not? The, the, the other thing as well is that if you don't have documents, because many of them actually destroy the documents, right, they should actually again well, be denied. Well, data I saw a couple of years ago, 98% of those crossing the channel in a dinghy did not have any documents. Oh, yes, they have phones, mind you. They always have phones, but they, when it comes to documents, uh, no, um, they should be denied straight away. This country... Uh, I think it's something like 80% of people, their claims are upheld, mm. right? compared to other European countries where it's almost exactly the reverse number, yeah. actually. Um, so I just worry about basically local authorities now taking all the brunt of this. Um, this will hugely accelerate, by the way. That's the point as well, which I think is worth making, is that because they're you know, doing this, uh, going through this backlog now, it will just mean there are a hell of a lot more people. Oh, yeah, it's a green flag. Around. It's, it's a green flag. Um, to people who want to make this journey, that they will very likely have their asylum claim go through. Um, Benjamin, is Peter being heartless there? Should we be welcoming everyone and anyone who crosses in a dinghy quickly well, when, you know, local authorities are already struggling to house Ukrainians now the Help for Homes scheme has come to an end, or Homes for... Homes for Ukrainians scheme has come to an end and also thousands of Afghans as well. Well, I do think it's, it's heartless to say that people who have been through traumas and experiences of war and abuse that we can't thankfully even imagine. You know, Britain should be a place that welcomes those and helps them rebuild their lives and contribute to our society. One of the things that strikes me as odd about having a 45 minute interview rather than seven hours, and you kind of touched it on the end, that this Rwanda scheme, the whole argument was that it will put them off coming here because they'll then be sent to this third country. And yet, if they're now making it public that you'll have this very short interview, which presumably isn't nearly as difficult if they are lying to get past mm. their boundary, well, that's going to send a very mixed message to these people about how easy it is to come here. So, you know, I do think it's a chance that it could encourage people to come here if you make the system much easier. And that isn't really what you want at all, because nobody wants anybody coming across in dinghies because that is so dangerous and so So you agree with right. Peter in that way that this is sending a green light for more people to take this particular dangerous route to this country because it does nice appear point. it does appear that we're heading towards sort of amnesty territory we know that the government already have said it's been reported uh, in the last few weeks that they are looking at amnesty um, for particular groups mm. of asylum seekers mm. this is I am worried because there have been more than a couple of cases of people who have slipped through the net and gone on to commit crimes. They were known to various authorities elsewhere in the world that they were criminals and they managed to get through our system in one way or another. And I think we should be thinking very carefully about the security implications of this, as well as whether, you know, as well as thinking about genuine claims. It's not just actually security, although that's hugely important, you're quite right. It's just actually simply that it's illegal. Mm. And uh, What's that is illegal, what really? They are, they are illegal migrants. I don't believe that this is about asylum. Fact is, 
It is a well-known part of international law that if you want to claim asylum, you do it in the first country you come to. These people are coming mostly from European countries, right? But I, think you, I think even you, Ben, would not, you know, claim that France is sort of like, in, in, you know, Afghanistan or, or any of these That's not places. the question at all, is it? It is, the, it is if, the question. If that were the case, then Greece and Spain would have to, and Italy would have to take the entirety of the refugees coming to Europe from much harder parts of the mm. world. I don't think the refugees, and the fact is... That's not an answer to the question. No, 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 it's... It, how, how much do these people pay even to get in these dinghies? Up to 5,000 or something like that, right? So much for poverty. Right? Yes, arguably I'm, it is I'm not the most needy. The, and this is the, the problem. About this is the problem. We need to be prioritising those who are most in need. And as you say, Peter, arguably, if you're paying thousands to come over in a boat, are you the most in need? But then there seem to be some people who think that anyone who's living a lesser lifestyle than those in, in the UK should deserve asylum. So it's very difficult.